this message for Danny from Dad. I got the head this morning, Danny. It's fantastic. I had a tiny accident in the post, but nothing a double glue can't fix. And then it's going to have pride of place on my desk. And how about you, me, Teresa? Any glue line round for us? Call me, please. It's your turn to take Claire to swimming club tonight. No, I won't. Try the back way. This is the back way. No, no, go down to the river and double back up Cannon Street. Why don't you try the accelerator occasionally? I hear it's one of the more forward-thinking pedals. I know you haven't taken the boys to school yet, Teresa. We need to talk. My mobile's on all day. Whatever I'm doing, I'll, I'll stop. Just call. Tom, let your hair down. Let's see if this baby can do over 20, huh? Actually, on second thoughts, just stop the car. I'm going to do the rest of it. We're nearly there. Look, I, I need to walk off the road rage you've given me by driving so slowly. But it's only just up here. Will you please just stop the car? <laughs> It's common knowledge that when a person slams into the back of another person, they are liable for any resulting damage. I went into the back of you because your husband performed a perfect emergency stop in the total absence of any actual emergency. This could have been my head. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. Look at it! Look at my helmet! <laughs> Sorry, how old are you? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Blackwood's downstairs. Downstairs, but she's not due until... Eleven, I know, but she wants to see you. What now? The word security used to describe her was agitated. Agitated? Where do you want her, upstairs? Well, let's keep whatever she's going to bring into this building under control in here. Right. If someone rear-ends you, all the damage is their fault, yeah? In a car or in the privacy of your own? Car, car. That's the generally accepted rule, yeah? Thank you. She's on her way up. The photos from the website have arrived. Um, well, fine, except for Martin, who looks like he's hearing voices. Unless they're on a bicycle. No, like he's actually listening to them. If a car goes into the back of another car, then they're generally deemed to be within their braking distance, consequently too close. But with a bicycle, the braking distance hypothesis is less clear-cut and responsibility is more open to interpretation. Jesus. Bike or no bike, he's liable. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm sure you're right. Blackford. Stephen's waiting for you. Thank you. A nightmare? Mm-hmm. Well, last night? All the staff I'm doing this for are following me barefoot across the Sahara. They're about to die from heat stroke and dehydration. A mile to my left is an oasis. A mile to my right is another oasis. One of them is a mirage. And which oasis do you choose? I choose the one on my left. You get there and it's just sand. In the real world, Elizabeth, you're leading your people to the right oasis with water, soft towels and a terrace bar. Then why do I feel like this? Because you're buying out your boss's company, that's why. A lot of people are depending on you. You're carrying a hell of a responsibility. Oh, God. <laughs> this seemed like such a good idea at first. When the Twin Towers went down and tourism to North Africa and the Middle East went into free fall, your boss, you thought shit, he thought quit. He thought sell up. But you thought rebuild. You thought future. Have you seen Martin's photo for the website? I only had to say chief, but from Mark's expression, you get the feeling the photographer is trying to shove an entire gorgonzola up. Elizabeth, what are you doing here? 
Abusing your boss's time and patience yet again. Come 11 o'clock, Elizabeth. You won't need my support or anyone else's. Serene? I'm driving this thing now, so sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Thank you. What is this monstrosity? Made it at school. It's me. I think it's bloody marvellous. Sorry, I didn't know. Elizabeth seems a little calmer now, don't you think? Oh, what, another restless night? Yeah, it was a bad dream about wiping out her entire workforce. Well, in another two hours she'll be the hero of the day. Yeah, that's what I told her. Though by rights it should be you. Well, Elizabeth came up with a plan, Maria, not me. Elizabeth persuaded people like David Mandel to form a management bio team, not me. See, sometimes it's about one person trying to make a go of something against all the odds. Yeah, but I so when Mark Hanrahan signs his company over to Elizabeth Blackwood, who's going to be the hero of the day? Me, for doing what I'm paid to do, or Elizabeth? For sticking her neck out where few others would. Elizabeth. My little lad's bust of his dad. Monstrosity or bloody marvellous? Bloody marvellous. Don't you forget it. Clause we're negotiating this morning for Bliss Records. One question. Is it onerous against the members of Freak? Yes. Is it legal? Of course. Bliss can stop a gang of eternal teeny boppers from having overtly intimate relationships for three years. The last thing Bliss wanted, a band in love all over the place. Well, Bliss can't sell Freaked on their music because it sounds as shite as all the other synthetic shite beamed down from planet pop. So they sell each member as your very own fantasy. Mine. But <laughs> if you're a 12-year-old girl in a training bra with caged teeth... Nothing sells better than sex, Ash. And nothing damages cells as much as the thought of your very own private sex god officially getting jiggy-whipped someone else. Please. He's probably stuck in traffic. Mark Hanrahan doesn't get stuck in traffic. Something's going on. Nothing's going on. Then why isn't he here? He'll be here. From the moment we actually got the finance in place and seriously looked like we were pulling this off, he's dragged his feet. Mark Hanrahan's been my boss for ten years. I've never known he'd be late for anything. I've got a bad feeling about this. Guys, this is the management buyer of a low-budget tour operator, not the third act denouement of the Amityville horror. Everyone who should be here will be here. Excuse me. I'd like to leave a message for Stephen and Teresa or one of the boys. Please speak after the tone. Yeah, Teresa, you wanted me to move out so you could have space. So I moved out and I gave you space. So, you've got what you need. You've got space. Now, what about what I need? Hmm? Will you call me on the mobile? Yeah. It's no appointment, no serene, direct line. Any time, just call. Three years. Two. Well, we think no intimate relationships for three years is a small price to pay for this band's massive projected success. What does intimate mean exactly? It means shaggy you like, just don't hold the hand in public. What about kissing? Lips, yes. Um, tongues, yes. Foreheads, noses, backs of hands, in adoring manner, absolutely not. What about groupies? Oh, more the merrier, because that's just sex. Sex is fine. Sex is good. Just no falling in love. Rock and roll and groupies, Guy. The honeys come with the territory. <laughs> Andy, um, this isn't rock and roll, and you're not Jimi Hendrix just back from now. <laughs> Playing the Star Spangled Banner with your teeth. Your middle class, squeaky clean stage school wannabes. You neatly fit the demographic profile. And that profile says, says that your fans will not want you to have intimate relationships for at least three years. Stop finishing my sentence. Replace my helmet. Oh, will you shut up about your stupid bloody helmet? Bicycle. <clears throat> okay, Mark Hanrahan's not coming. He wants to postpone for 24 hours. There's another offer. Do you have any idea how much I personally stand to lose if this goes pear-shaped? He hasn't mentioned another offer. While we were the only interested buyers, he played along, stringing it out until he could interest another group. It's not going to go pear-shaped. And I repeat, there is nothing to indicate a rival offer. Is that what I go back and tell my people? 
Nothing to worry about, folks. Your jobs are secure because my lawyer says there is nothing to indicate that they're about to be dumped. Is that the best you can do? We should go. We just finished with Elizabeth Blackwood and David Mandel. Give them five minutes to get clear of the building, then call David on his mobile. Ask him if he's prepared to meet me alone and in confidence. If he says yes, tell him to be on Angelica's in half an hour. And if he says no? You'll ask him in a way in which he say yes. By the way, Ruth had your accounts collected. Uh-huh. Paralegal took him away on a trolley. It was big, noisy, obvious, okay. No messages. What are you expecting from David Mandel? That a company is run like a family. And every family has two things. One. I don't know. Pets? One is secrets, and two is. Well, if number one isn't pets, I'm guessing number two looking for isn't long queues for the bathroom. Secrets? Two. Someone willing to give up those secrets if they can be persuaded it's in the family's interest to do so. Don't ever make me look that unprofessional again. Oh, they thought it was a new negotiation technique. We came across like a three ring circus. We won, didn't we? They want to take us out for a drink. Oh, no. They want to thank us for contractually banning them from satisfying personal relationships for three whole years. I'm sorry, I just don't sup ale with people that stupid. I think it's more that we've opened their eyes to the shark-infested waters that they found themselves in and they want to get on the right side of the shark, yes. <laughs> Annie? It's my turn to take Claire swimming tonight, which means I've got to leave on time, which means I've got to work through lunch. See yourself. See you later. Oh, Ash. Yeah. If they get caught doing something stupid, they'll get a pat on the back from management and a centre spread of free publicity in the tabloids. If you do, you'll be hauled in front of the Law Society Disciplinary Committee and be relieved of your practising certificate. What are you implying? You know what we're implying. More to the point, you know exactly why we're implying it. David Mandel will be at Angelica's in 25 minutes. Thank you. And Ruth Romberg wants you to sign an affidavit, confirming that the accounts collected this morning amount to full disclosure. Delivered on a trolley? Oh, in person. In person? Quite a little show she's putting on, don't you think? Don't underestimate the amount of gossip insinuating its way around the building about this. I'm not. This could be very damaging for your chances of getting senior partnership and give Clive Hocker the advantage over you. I know. We'd uh, move things along with a little less pop and a little more fizz, if you know what I mean. Shouldn't you see how things go before you start a habit you might be unable to kick or maintain down the line? Oh, no, no, our management gives us a bit of uh, pocket money, and you. You coming? Let me forget you're wearing a suit. <laughs> Nigel, appears if we divide you for our lawyers instead of Jonathan. Well, when you big and famous, set Jonathan in our house. Maybe you'll be in the hot seat next time, not just riding shotgun. Maybe. What if I was to ask you for a little legal advice in private? Well, I'd say, take the car and call me. But what if I want it now? Now? Listen, I've got a flat down by the wharf. Ten minutes as the cab flies, I could show you the view from my balcony. 
Hear that voice? Rumpole of the Bailey wants to show me the view from his balcony. Easy, Tiger. Is the whole band invited or just the member with tits? Rumpole was, uh, is a different kind of lawyer. More like a, uh, a barrister. Yeah, um, we don't actually give it to us. That's a really bad idea. You do realise my boss is out there. We've got enough if you want some. Oh, no, I meant... He knows what you meant. <sighs> right, that was great. Who's next? <laughs> Just thinking about something Elizabeth said this morning when Hanrahan didn't show. She assumed he was doing a secret deal with another purchaser. Go on. Well, given that you've all worked for Hanrahan and been incredibly loyal to him, in sometimes very difficult circumstances, now why would he do that? More to the point, given how closely they've worked together over the years, why would Elizabeth think he'd do that to her? I've only been with the company two and a half years. You'd have to ask Elizabeth. By the way, your mobile rang while you're in the gens. Oh, damn. Excuse me. Hello, Teresa. At last. Happy birthday to Sorry. you. Happy birthday to you. Just started up. Oh, listen, I'll call you back. Happy no, wait, Teresa, I'll call you back. I... Happy Jesus. Happy birthday. Sammy! Stephen, long time no see. Never missed squash in four years and all of a sudden you bail out three games in a row. Still. I know how it is. I certainly know how carefully you've managed your career, Sammy. And how you might think it's not a good idea to be seen socialising with a colleague under investigation for expense fraud. However bogus the grounds. Anyway, you still got a few fingers in the leisure pie? Our lines and tour operators are going down like nine pins. Not to my neck in insolvency. Good for you. Currently working on a management bio of a company called SouthMed. Mm, I know. I need an experience here to the ground, Sammy Prondo. Arrival offers, secret negotiations, anything of that nature. Ordinarily. But like I said... You up your neck. It's like a turkey shoot. No problem. Julie and the girls? Good. I think I'll walk it. Steve. Not now, Ash. I've pictured in under ten words. Footage on the website instead of photos. Uh, that's seven. You finished? Photos are dull. There are a lot of younger potential clients around, possibly looking to work with younger lawyers that they can relate to. So? So let's project ourselves in a manner that they can relate to. And then, of course, there's a humanitarian angle. Which is? You can't let Martin's photo on the website. Damage business and scare children who log on by accident. Okay, I'm provisionally intrigued. Get a camcorder out of IT and go away. Thanks. All the years we've known each other. I've had you down for a lot of things, Sammy, but never a gutless bastard. Thank you, pardon. I asked you how Julie and the girls were. Yeah, and I told you they were fine. Mm -hmm. And then it was behoven upon you to ask after Theresa and the boys, but you didn't. Because you know everything with my family is far from fine. I didn't want to embarrass you. Sorry, embarrass? Embarrass who? Look, wh what is this? Fingers crossed this job won't have the same effect on your marriage as it did mine. Julie understands the pressures involved. So did Teresa. Right up until the afternoon, she packed three suitcases of my clothes and had them delivered to my office. Look, I'm sorry things haven't worked out with the family. I'm sorry about the investigation, OK? Is that what you want? 
Can you leave now? Yeah, investigation, what investigation? I mean, who's mentioned anything about an investigation, Sam? Everyone knows about Ruth's investigation into your expenses. You mentioned it yourself downstairs. Well, it's funny that no one's talked to me about it, though, don't you think? No expressions of solidarity or support. I hear people talking as I walk down a corridor, but nothing to my actual face! If you're innocent of misconduct, what support do you need? If I'm innocent of misconduct... If! Danny, it's Dad. Hello, Dad. Is your mum there? Um, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? She's either there or she isn't, Dan. I mean... I'll find out. That's it, Dan. You go and find out if Mum's there or not. That's a good lad. She can't come to the phone. What do you mean she can't come to the phone? Well, why can't she? Forget it, Dan! Just tell her to forget it! Oh. Dougie said you're in here. Mm-hmm. Hope he didn't relay that information by touch. Dirty soul doesn't wash up after himself. I put my ear to the ground by your management buyout. Mm -hmm. There's no rival offer. Sure. According to my contacts, Elizabeth Blackwood's the only game in town. Thank you. How is everything, you know, with the family? Not now. No. I've asked Danny to join us because I find her insight into stalled or difficult negotiations usually invaluable. She now knows as much about this as I do. So, you've got some information? Well, the only concrete information we have is that there's no rival offer. Well, that's something. It is, yeah, but it's not enough. <laughs> our heads together is what we think Mark Hanrahan's playing at. I mean, after all, his business was right for acquisition. He put it up for acquisition. So why the sudden reluctance to have it acquired? And what's the point? Why the sudden reluctance to see it acquired by you? Sorry, Stephen. Can I have a word? Excuse me. Yes? I love you, Father. You and your boss had an affair, didn't you? Recently. Annie? I'm so sorry, would you excuse me? Thanks, Elaine. Is it? My father in law's downstairs. He's trying to mediate between me and Teresa. I don't know what he's doing here, but I really need to talk to him. Well, that's okay. I'll look after Elizabeth. You'll talk to her? Yes, I've already started. Go, go. I wouldn't normally. Just go. To lose your wife and kids once through this place is unfortunate. To lose them twice would be careless. You're a star. My daughter's very upset, Stephen. Oh, she's upset. I'm the poor bastard who's been banging his head against a brick phone, David. She explained to me how you've been trying to get hold of her. And trying and trying. This afternoon, you got hold of Dan. Now, look here, David. And that you lost your temper, screamed at him and slammed the phone down. But firstly, I didn't scream at Dan. I shouted. <laughs> Huge difference to a ten-year-old given observer status on his parents' failing marriage. If I can just prove to Teresa I can change. 
Theresa called me this afternoon. She asked me to come and see you. Yes, I understand. In her place. In her place? What does that mean? In her place? Who ended it with who? We kept it secret from everyone in the company. How on earth did you know? Well, Mark Hanrahan was your mentor. He was attractive, mature, successful, nurturing. I've never even met the guy, and I wouldn't say no to a quick romp from that description alone. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but every time we mention his name, you do something a little personal, like you touch your hair or your face. Um, I don't know, you cross your legs, you tense up. Plus, you are a woman operating in a highly charged masculine environment. Even if I was taking a wild punt, I would say the odds on being right were no greater than evens. So... So? What did you do to him? Um, Mark just wanted us to be together. He was growing bored with the business. His dream was to build it up for a couple of years more and then cashed in for a vineyard in France. Just him and me and 50 acres of grapes. And you didn't share that dream? Oh, I tried. But he was going to the end of his career when I was near the beginning of mine. I thought it was wrong to pretend that the situation was otherwise. Yeah. It can be difficult to be with somebody who is, um, who's pushing for something you're not sure you want yourself. I found it was impossible. She doesn't want you calling for a while. Now, if you want to see Daniel and Sam, Teresa would like you to arrange it through me for the foreseeable future. Why is she doing this? Oh. Even now, you're not really listening. Teresa wants to move on in her life, Stephen. I'll be in touch. It's like to be Stephen Bradley's training. Uh, well, according to Sammy's door, it is smashing. <laughs> oh, yes. Straight to camera, Maria. Just <laughs> say what you think. Being Stephen Bradley's trainee is simply the best grounding in corporate law in the city of London. Or how to fiddle your expenses with the oh so maverick Stephen Bradley, <laughs> possibly the best grounding in white collar crime this side of Wall Street, the movie. I think he said enough, Dougie. Um, uh, Maria, tell me something. At what point does Stephen's behaviour stop being unconventional and start being illegal? <laughs> Knock it off, Dougie. Dougie and Nick isn't a twist, Maria. It's only a joke. Then why aren't I laughing? Ah, that'll be because you know it's probably true. Bullshit. Oh, come on. Naturally, you'd lead to Stephen's defence. Knock it off, Dougie. Well, she's hardly the first girl trainee to get hot under the gusset for her partner. You little prick. Maria! A word. What do you think you're doing? I can handle the doggies of this world. By plastering them in guacamole? He's an arsehole! And since when do you take arsehole seriously? You didn't hear what he was saying about... You didn't hear what he was saying. Actually, I did. That's not the point. The point is, don't rise, Maria. Once you rise, you've shown the doggies of this world where to get you next time, and they'll always have the upper hand. It wasn't Sammy's door, you rising? If I didn't speak from experience, what authority would my advice actually have? Exactly how much did you hear in there? Forget what I heard. And forget what you said. Dignity at all times. Good night, yep. Maria. It's a busy day tomorrow.
Dominic, because I promise I will. Hang on, hang on a minute. Any sign of Stephen? Oh, he's not answering at his hotel and his mobile phone switched off. <sighs> David Mandel's rung three times for him and this just arrived from Mark Hanrahan's people. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. One word, and that word is help. Help? Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I also have a word, and that word is helmet. <sighs> Annie. What? Over here. All right, what am I looking at? It's Ashley's footage from Angelica's last night. What, Ruth from Berg and Clive Hocker? Oh my god. Oh my god. Ruth Fromberg is holding Clive Hocker's hand. Do you think they actually do it? I mean, I've never met a single woman who didn't have at least one quality that would allow me to have sex with them. Except Ruth Fromberg. Oh, please. Don't allow him to be Mr. Discerning in the right mood. You'd have sex with a stale bagel. Hang on, hang on a minute. Let's just concentrate here. Ruth Fromberg's investigating Stephen, right? An investigation with little or no basis in fact. But one which could generate a ton of mud. Yeah. How better for Ruth to give her boyfriend the edge for senior partnership than my crapping all over the reputation of his main rival? She wouldn't. Hands up who believes strong feelings for someone would make you want to help them in any way you could. Yeah, funny that. All the girls. Come. Hello, Ruth. If you've come to special plead on behalf of Stephen, you're wasting your time. No, no, I haven't, actually. Um, I've come to ask you a question. Oh? Yeah, yeah, me and the girls were talking downstairs, and we were wondering what he's like in bed. <laughs> Stephen? No, no, God, no, not Stephen, no. No, Clive Hocker. What? Yeah, you see, the girls think he'd be a bit of a disaster, but I think having a face like a smacked ass, he'd probably be very attentive. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, which of us is right? <laughs> All hell has broken out. Oh, fill me in over coffee, then. Right, well, Hanrahan's lawyers have sent through three pages of nitpicking queries, which Ashley and Maria are cracking now. Basic stalling tactic? Why? <sighs> uh, your conversation with Elizabeth last night? I don't think Hanrahan's able to forgive her for finishing a relationship they had three years ago. Why the hell didn't you tell me? Oh, have you the slightest idea how quickly and how often a successful woman's rise to power is put down to her having shagged her way there? Maybe in the past. No, right? maybe in the past, bollocks. It's the first thing you hear from your male peers. Now, Elizabeth's relationship with Hanrahan was private, and she was desperate to keep it that way. She knew if it ever saw the light, she'd never be judged on merit thereafter. You've got to get her this company, Stephen. You have got to get him to let her go. As we didn't hear back regarding the last minute queries you faxed over this morning, I'm assuming our responses proved satisfactory. <clears throat> Excellent. Then may Excuse I... Excuse me. Yes? Before we begin the process of completion and signing off, yes, we uh, have one further clause we should like admitted to the final contract. Are you serious? Um, yes, we are. Your client wants a non-executive seat on the board. Absolutely no. I've been in the travel business for over 20 years. I believe I could be an invaluable source of wisdom and experience should they need me. Mark, this is ridiculous. A guiding hand, if you will. A backseat driver, if you will. My client feels he's owed this much. Owed? Owed's an interesting word to use in this context, don't you think, Mr. Hanrahan? Who owes you this much? The new board as a whole, or Mr. Mandel and the rest of the management team? Or would it be Elizabeth Blackwood herself? Don't you think it's time to let go of the past? It's a non-voting seat. My client could exercise no power. It would effectively have no voice. It's completely contrary to the spirit of the deal. I want a seat on the board. Why? Because I want it. Then have it. Have every seat on the board, Mark, because if you insist on one, it will be the only one. Annie, man. Maria, would you kindly escort Mr. Mandel from the room? I should like to speak to Mr. Hanrahan in camera. 
Elizabeth, wait. Wait a minute. Right, Martin. Just wait five minutes. Let Stephen try and calm him down, okay? Can we continue under the present circumstances? I think so. Now, do you know where I spent last night, Mr. Hanrahan? Do I need to? It was in a car. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But it doesn't matter how roomy the car in question. But, uh, you have to be pretty crazy to spend a night in one. Yes, I agree. But last night I was feeling crazy, and I think I'm feeling a little bit crazy this morning, too. Yes, a man with a craziness hangover is what faces you across this table, but I think you can relate to that because I think you're feeling a little bit crazy as well, am I right? Mr. Bradley, this is all mildly entertaining, but get on with it. See, the trouble with lawyers, Mr. Hanrahan, is that because we bill by the minute, we feel compelled to speak, regardless of whether we have anything to say. Mark, this is turning into a game show. I want to talk to you, Mr. Hanrahan. Not as a lawyer, but as one crazy man to another. I want to talk to you about the rage we feel with those to whom we have given everything no longer want us. We shouldn't be sitting here listening to this. Be quiet. Mark, wait outside. Uh, Mark, I strongly advise you... I'm instructing you to wait outside. Right. What's going on? You tell me. Elizabeth Blackwood doesn't want you, Mark. She doesn't want to pick your grapes. She doesn't want you on the new board of directors. So what does that tell you? That she doesn't know what's good for her. In your judgment. That's all I have. I agree. Only after being kicked out by my wife do I now know what's good for me, but it's too late. So what are my choices? The same as yours. To resist reality or to accept it. She told me she wanted to be with me. That was then. I don't deserve to be treated like this. You're angry. Anyone who isn't angry today is either under five or dead. I'm angry. My wife is angry. Shit, even my kids are angry. But the difference between us and you is that you can do something about it. Today, you can let go of your anger and run out of this building a free man. I want a seat on the board. No, what you want is revenge. I want a seat on the board. You want Elizabeth Blackwood's blood to pay for the hurt and pain she caused by finishing with you. Only it's my job to make sure you don't get a single drop of it. One signature and you're free. One signature. No, I can't. Yes, you can. Give her the comedy mark. Give her your blessing and walk out of this building with your head held high. With nothing. With no responsibilities, no obligations, nobody calling on your time. It's not nothing. It's freedom. Show me. Show me what it's like. No more briefcases where you're going. Think of your vineyard, Mark. No, it's no more waiting for lifts. Quick, before the moment passes. Stairs. Come on, go! I don't look back, just keep going because we're as bad as hell! We don't want to take anymore! Keep going, Mark. Keep going. Freedom.
Pity Annie couldn't say for the dotting of the I's and the crossing of the T's. She had a parents' evening at Claire's school. Oh, didn't know. Oh, missed too many of those and one day. Well, one day you wish you hadn't. Sometimes you have to actually be there. As to why Ruth dropped the investigation. I don't know why she started the investigation. I don't know why she stopped the investigation. I am curious. I don't like the symmetry. Yeah, but if you knew why, then you'd be better prepared if she tried something similar again. I don't think she will. How can you be sure? Well, we can't be sure about anything, can we, Maria? The best we can do is live with uncertainty and not in it. came back then. Mr. Cooper Fossard. After Stephen's spirited display in the lobby this afternoon, I thought we might have lost him. No. I am glad. Mr. Carter about? No, I think he's gone. Could you pass on a message? Yeah, of course. Tell him we must be perceived to be a rock of integrity and expertise in the treacherous sea of commerce. Rocks are still unassailable. So this firm's unassailability will be reflected on the website in still photographs, not lawless footage. I'll tell him. One more thing. Tell young Ashley to be more prudent to whom he gives his card. His good name and his job are not to be tossed away so lightly. I'll pass it on. <laughs> 